welcome everyone my name is miss rajeshri bhuya and i'm a veterinary student currently in the fourth professional year of lakhimpur college of veterinary science assam agricultural university today i'm here to present on the topic infectious bronchitis is a disease of poultry we'll begin with the epidemiology of the disease followed by its etiology host susceptibility mode of transmission pathogenesis clinical signs post mortem lesions diagnosis treatment and at last we will talk about the control of the disease synonym this disease is also known as avian infectious bronchitis as it occurs in poultry now i'll go give a brief introduction about the disease infectious bronchitis is an acute viral highly contagious disease of poultry which is characterized by tracheal rheals coughing and sneezing by the three mentioned clinical signs we can make out that this virus targets the respiratory tract apart from the respiratory tract it also targets the urogenital tract now coming to the epidemiology infectious bronchitis was first reported in the united states of america in 1931 and is now distributed worldwide it was first reported from india in the year 1964 and the all india coordinated project on respiratory diseases of poultry has revealed that the disease is present almost in all states of india coming to the etiology here is an electron micrograph of infectious bronchitis virus particles here is the classification it belongs to the species avian coronavirus which belongs to the subgenus igapovirus belonging to the genus gamma coronavirus which comes under the family coronaviridae and under the order nidovirales the properties of the infectious bronchitis virus are as follows it is a single stranded positive sense rna it is pleomorphic it is enveloped with spikes on its surface and the virus is very fragile it is able to withstand ph ranges from 2 to 12 which depends on the strain temperature and time of exposure the virus is inactivated after 15 minutes at 56 degrees celsius and after 90 minutes at 45 degrees celsius there are other strains which are more resistant and stay for a longer period they are destroyed under direct sunlight and are most sensitive to disinfectants now coming to the host susceptibility chickens are the most important natural hosts and there are also reports which have reported that it also occurs in birds like pigeons turkeys quails etc all ages of chickens can be infected even then the severity is inversely related to age which means that the younger the bird is the more susceptible it is to the virus chicks of 1 to 4 weeks are most severely affected and the respiratory form is most severe in the young chicks there is also a nephritic form which i have mentioned earlier this form a is more predominant in birds which are under 10 weeks of age the mode of transmission it is mainly horizontal which means that it can be transmitted by direct or indirect contact by inhalation or ingestion by direct contact as already mentioned by aerosol fomites and the virus is shed in feces and respiratory discharges which causes contamination of the feed and the water which makes them the source of infection for other birds the vertical transmission has never been reported even though surface contamination of eggs can occur which means that the surfaces of the eggs act as sources when they are transported to hatcheries now coming to the pathogenesis the incubation period of the disease is 18 to 36 hours after the invasion of the virus it first localizes in the respiratory tract 
and then reaches the blood causing pyremia. Before, cause, before reaching the blood, it causes damage to the respiratory tract, which leads to the manifestation of the respiratory symptoms. And after causing viremia, it goes to the reproductive and the urinary systems and affects the, these systems. In the reproductive system, it causes lowered egg production and other problems to the egg. And in the urinary system, it causes nephritis and interstitial infiltration of lymphoid cells. The clinical findings have been classified into three groups. The first is the group of chicks, which are up to six weeks of age. And this is the group which is most susceptible. This group of chicks show dyspnea, coughing, sneezing, gasping, tracheal rails, and oculonasal discharges. There is general malaise and the birds tend to huddle together. The chicks less than two weeks of age may have permanent damage to the oviduct which results in no or less quality egg production in later life and this causes a threat to the farm because they are fed equally and normally but they do not give the proper output to the farm and that is why causes great loss. The most strains have low mortality or negligible mortality but it may be complicated by secondary bacterial infections. This is a picture of a chick showing signs of gasping due to respiratory distress. There is yet another picture of a chick showing respiratory signs. Now Coming to the second group, that is the growing chicks. We can see that the signs are less severe and they have respiratory signs like tracheal rails, distressed breathing, audible respiratory noise. Also, the nephritic form, as I have mentioned earlier, can be seen in this group. And it is usually seen in chicks of three to six weeks of age. And if the nephritic form occurs, it is exhibited by increased drinking, urolithiasis, ruffle feathers, and wet droppings. Here is a picture of a chicken showing signs of dyspnea, that is difficulty in breathing. This is another chick showing signs of gasping. This is a picture of a bird which is showing ocular symptoms, showing excessive tear production which has led to feather loss as that can be seen here. Now coming to the signs in laying birds, there is a drop in egg production and this is the main sign in laying birds which is associated with the eggs. Not only drop in egg production, there is also a deterioration of the egg quality and it causes formation of belted eggs and the eggs are soft shelled and are misshapen. Also, there are changes in the embryo. The embryo are stunted and are dwarf. And the respiratory signs which we have seen in the previous two groups are less obvious here. Now, let us come to a term called as internal layers what it is actually due to this virus causing damage to the oviduct there is complete or partial failure of the development of the oviduct which causes normal ovulation later in life but since the oviduct is underdeveloped it is unable to pick up the ova which has been normally ovulated and since there is a failure of the oviduct to pick up the ova, the ovum is shed in the body cavity itself and this particular condition leads to internal layers. This is a picture showing a comparison between a normal 
embryo which is the negative control and is present in the rightmost side of the picture whereas the other two are infected by infectious bronchitis virus and both of them show stunted growth and there is curling of the embryo. There is a comparison between three groups of eggs which are laid by hens during an outbreak of infectious bronchitis. The above left corner you can see the normal eggs and in the above right corner there are two shell-less eggs and in the center there are rough shelled eggs then we have in the next picture wrinkled egg shells which are also laid by hens infected with infectious bronchitis virus the post-mortem lesion cloudy air sacs which may contain yellow caseous exudates there is caseous plug in the trachea there may be pneumonia and in nephritic cases the kidneys are swollen pale and the tubules and ureters are distended with uric crystals the fluid yolk material may be found in the abdomen and there is degeneration of the ovary and swollen oviducts here is a picture of a trachea which is showing edema and congestion the next picture is also showing catarrhal exudation in the lumen of the trachea. This picture is a comparison. Picture A is of an uninfected controlled chicken and picture B is of a chicken which has been infected by infectious bronchitis virus. And you can see there is enlargement of the kidney and there is deposition of urex making it look paler. This is another picture showing swollen and pale kidneys. Here is a picture showing degeneration of the ovary with atrophy and hemorrhagic follicles. The last picture in this is that of a bird showing enlarged abdomen which has been infected by infectious bronchitis again by the strain called QX. This is another picture showing enlarged abdomen which is caused mainly by cystic oviduct. It is again of the strain QX. Here is a picture showing cystic oviduct which is distended with clear fluid. The ovary as you can see here is a normal one. The third picture of figure C is the picture showing multiple cysts in a bird which is also infected by the cubic strain. Let us come to the diagnosis. The diagnosis can be made by clinical signs which is very difficult as because the respiratory signs and the signs showing reduced egg production and poor quality are less specific and resemble other diseases. The postmortem findings are also often not conclusive because they mimic other diseases and therefore it needs more specific tests for its diagnosis. Serological tests like CFT or the complement fixation test, fluorescence antibody test, serum agglutination tests, ELISA, immunoperoxidase technique and others can be used. Differential diagnosis. Why is differential diagnosis required? Is because this disease mimics other disease and it is important for us to differentiate it from those diseases. Number one, Newcastle disease. The similarity here is that Newcastle disease also shows respiratory signs and a basis of difference between the two viruses causing disease is that the disease caused by Newcastle disease virus is much higher in its mortality and the eggs are not misshapen unlike in infectious bronchitis. In infectious laryngotracheitis also the respiratory signs can be seen but the infectious laryngotracheitis spreads more slowly in a flock than that of infectious bronchitis 
and the respiratory signs rather are more severe than that of infectious bronchitis. Also, there are no abnormal eggs. We see that avian influenza also is a similar kind of a disease, viral disease. And if we have to differentiate it from infectious bronchitis, we can consider the points of edema of head and neck, which can be seen in avian influenza and the CNS involvement in avian influenza. In infectious coryza too, we can see the respiratory signs and the facial swelling in infectious coryza can act as a difference, which is because the facial swelling is very rare in infectious bronchitis. The egg drop syndrome, we can see similarities like a drop in egg production and shell quality problems. And we can differentiate it based on that there is no internal quality affection that occurs in egg drop syndrome. But in infectious bronchitis, the internal egg quality is affected. Now coming to the treatment, there is no specific treatment as it is a viral disease. However, we can provide supportive treatment to the birds. We can begin with antibiotic therapy or the secondary bacterial infection that may occur. We can use cephalexin, etc. Here I have mentioned an example. We can use lixin powder at the dose rate of 20 gram for 1500 chicks for five days in drinking water. Here is the picture. And then we should go for electrolyte replacers to compensate renal damage. And here are some electrolyte powders which we can use. The treatment also depends on some managemental factors which are like the provision of additional heat and the avoidance of overcrowding. Now coming to the control of the disease, the managemental procedures are to be strictly followed, which include isolation and repopulation with only one day old chicks. There should be proper ventilation of houses and proper hygiene. Also, the birds of different age should be weighed separately, which will reduce the uh, spread of the disease. Now coming to the prophylaxis, we can go for vaccination and the most commonly used vaccine is the live vaccine which is made by the strain Massachusetts strain and we can recommend a schedule with a primary dose from 1 to 14 day of the chick which can be administered in the drinking water or as an eye drop or by spray method and the booster is to be given two weeks after the initial vaccination we can mix it in the drinking water here is a picture of a vaccine mobilis and it is the infectious bronchitis plus the Newcastle disease virus and it belongs to the strain Massachusetts there is another vaccine available which is Again, the live attenuated avian infectious bronchitis from the Massachusetts strain. Here we have come to the end of this disease discussion and talking about the bibliography. I have taken these informations from www.infectiousbronchitis.com. Diseases of Poultry, a textbook of preventive veterinary medicine by Amalanda Chakraborty. From Mark Veterinary Manual, from Wikipedia and the pictures from www.nc.cdc.gov and from partnersa.vetpornal.edu. Lastly, I want to thank you for your patient hearing.